The call comes in. The request? To transport a critically ill patient from an outlying hospital to a higher level of care. Within minutes, UC Health can send one of two helicopters, in either Colorado Springs or Loveland, equipped with a critical care team and state-of-the-art equipment to help stabilize and transport the sickest patients from both medical facilities and on-scene accidents to a more appropriate healthcare facility. But the safe transport of the patient doesn't rest solely on the flight team. You too are a critical member of that team. In the next few minutes, join us as we review the safety and emergency procedures surrounding helicopter landing pads. Whether you are a member of security, clinical staff, or perhaps even someone else with helipad responsibilities, the fact is, accidents happen. Thus, knowing what to do when seconds count can ultimately save lives. For the UC Health System, we rely on the Airbus H125 as our helicopter of choice. Lightweight and versatile, the H-125 covers a 150 nautical mile radius, allowing us to serve patients across most of Colorado and into parts of Wyoming and Nebraska. And with a top speed of over 130 miles per hour, Lifeline will arrive quickly to both care for and transport the patient to the appropriate destination. While the helicopter landing at your facility may not always be UC Health's Lifeline, the safety and general operating procedures are very similar across the board. When a helicopter is inbound to your location, the air crew should provide an estimated time en route to your facility. Once the arrival time is within 10 minutes of that estimated arrival time, one designated individual should report to the helipad and conduct a search for foreign object debris, commonly referred to as FOD. A FOD check requires a complete check of the helipad surface and surrounding areas before each and every helicopter arrival. As you may not be able to see the small pieces of FOD, which could easily damage people, the helicopter, and other nearby equipment or vehicles, the requirement is that you walk the entire pad. But the pad isn't the only place danger lurks. Look off of the pad as well and ensure any potential hazards are secure. The rotor wash from a helicopter on its slow descent may easily spin up items such as plastic bags, which could easily become a safety issue. For those facilities that have a ground helipad, Ensure that there are no vehicles on or near the pad. Additionally, advise any workers who may be present in the area and continue to monitor access points to ensure others do not cross. Never assume that just because other individuals are already waiting at the pad that they checked the pad. It is everyone's responsibility to ensure that the pad is clear, so be sure to ask the other individuals who were there first instead of assuming. Now, it should go without saying that every helipad is undoubtedly different, so be sure to familiarize yourself with your facility's fire suppression system and know where your nearest emergency exits are. The air crew may rely on you to have this knowledge in the event of an emergency. Finally, while you are outside, check to make sure that the helipad windsock is up, that all the lights are intact, and that everything looks good mechanically. If you suspect anything is off, give a call to your local maintenance folks to check it out, as it is always better to be safe than sorry. Great! You've walked the pad, you've secured any loose items, everything looks to be in order, and you're waiting for the arrival of the helicopter. Now what? Well, inspecting your equipment should be next, most notably your patient transport gurney. Many critical patients require a high volume of oxygen. Ensure that you have a full oxygen bottle ready to go on your gurney. One best practice is regardless of the amount of oxygen used, replace the tank with a full tank from the unit that you are transporting the patient to. For instance, if you are offloading a patient and transporting them to your ICU, exchange the used oxygen tank on the gurney with the new oxygen tank from the ICU. This way, you will always have a full bottle ready to go. Besides the oxygen tank, one of the key importances is ensuring your gurney moves freely and that its parking brake works. Many individuals think that a helicopter is a tank, but it's largely constructed out of fiberglass. Even the slightest dent in a helicopter will render it unusable until it can be inspected by a mechanic and deemed airworthy, or worse, until it can be removed from the pad, often taking several days to accomplish, effectively shutting down one of the main ways your facility accepts critical patients. Outside of the oxygen tank and the brake, double check that there are no loose items, pads, or mattresses on the gurney itself. 
Next, after you are done inspecting your gurney, take a look to ensure that you have all the proper personal protective equipment, or PPE. You may not need it now, but a simple check will help to always ensure its availability. The majority of PPE used on a helipad consists of ear protection and eye protection. However, having gloves, gowns, and additional equipment such as oxygen supplies are important to ensuring the safety of everyone involved. Now, where the ear and eye protection come into play are during the hot offload of a patient. So let's go over the differences between a cold and hot offload. A cold offload is the one that you will be a part of the vast majority of the time, and it simply means that the engine is off and the rotors, or blades of the aircraft, have stopped moving. This is the preferred method for all parties involved because it is quieter, it is easier to communicate, and there is less danger involved. A hot offload is done on the very rare occasion but involves unloading a patient while the rotors are still spinning. Naturally, this creates a loud environment where it is difficult to communicate, thus increasing the danger to yourself and the patient. The rotor wash, or the air pushed downwards by the blades of the helicopter, will be significant, so you will need to secure all loose items before you approach a helicopter. This includes badges, stethoscopes, pens, and anything else you have on your person that could be blown off of you. Also, spit out any gum before approaching the helicopter. With the pressure changes, simply opening your mouth can be enough for it to be swept out and onto something it should not be on. If you ever notice something getting swept away, such as paperwork, do not chase it. Chasing items tend to cause tunnel vision, which could ultimately end up with you being seriously injured or killed. Next, never approach a hot helicopter until you are given permission from the crew. A crew member from Lifeline will make every attempt to get out of the helicopter, come brief you on what is going on, and then escort you out. However, due to the time sensitivity requiring the hot offload, this may not be feasible. Therefore, watch for a thumbs up from one of the crew members indicating that you can approach. If you are ever unsure, remain in place and the crew member will provide the signal once again. Finally, never approach a helicopter from the rear, and never attempt to circle the aircraft from the rear. The spinning tail rotor is the most dangerous part of the aircraft, often spinning faster than the eye can perceive. Now that you understand the difference between a cold and hot offload, let's talk operations. When a helicopter is landing, stay inside until the helicopter is on the pad. If you do not have an enclosure, stay a safe distance away from the helicopter until it lands, as people are difficult to see from a pilot's perspective. When you are approaching the helicopter, ensure all IV poles are down and raise nothing above your shoulders, including your hands. Fully raise the gurney prior to getting to the helicopter and place the gurney where the flight crew instructs you, ensuring you put the brake on after the gurney is in place. After the gurney is in place, wait for the flight crew to provide further instructions. Remember that the helicopter is fragile. Do not operate any doors on the helicopter itself. If you are participating in a hot offload, be sure you have the proper PPE in place to include ear and eye protection. If it is a cold offload, do not approach a helicopter until the rotors come to a complete stop. The rotor blades can bend and flex by several feet, which has resulted in the death of individuals in the past. As you begin to offload the patient, be sure you know where to grab the helicopter stretcher. While some helicopters have plenty of room for you to grab, others do not and will require you use straps to move the stretcher without you getting pinched. As always, should you have any questions, you are encouraged to ask the flight crew. Remember to move the patient slowly, as there is a lot of equipment in a confined space that must be moved at the same time. Rapidly moving the patient could mean dislodging equipment and even hurting the patient further. Only one flight crew member will be in charge of the patient offload, so be sure to identify this member and follow all of their instructions. If you notice a piece of equipment or something that doesn't look right, say stop and correct the problem. Once the patient is securely on the gurney, the side rails are up and all equipment is in place, then you may transport the patient to the unit. When transporting to the unit, only one individual should operate the gurney. Much like CPR, more hands does not equal more help. Throughout the entire process, from pre-landing to takeoff, security should remain with the flight crew. 
This is to ensure that if something should happen, someone is there to help ensure the protection of the crew, the patient, and staff members alike. If there is ever an accident, do not put yourself in danger. Immediately activate the emergency response system by dialing 911 and activating the fire suppression system if a crash has occurred. You should also notify your hospital supervisor and the Lifeline Communication Center as soon as possible. Well, that about wraps it up. On behalf of the men and women of both Lifeline and the rest of the UC Health family, we thank you for taking the time to be a part of keeping our environment safe for not only ourselves, but our patients. It is only with your help and your understanding of the unique environment in helicopters that UC Health is able to continue to improve lives.